Lately, I've been noticing that I feel like I have reached my peak in my aiming ability. I've been playing the RA Hard Benchmarks playlist on AimLab for quite some time now, and I've not really been able to consistently get close to my high scores. They feel like flukes for the most part. Now for the longest time, I have been a firm believer that mouse acceleration is terrible for your aim because it's not consistent enough to help in developing your muscle memory. So when I saw a video from West Proter titled Radiance Think Raw Excel is Instant Good Aim, I was incredibly skeptical, as this went against everything I had ever believed about aiming. Now, I won't say I'm the best aimer in the world, but I have about 7 years of experience in tactical FPS games such as Counter-Strike and Valorant, where I currently sit at a moral 1. And I also score well above average in most aiming tasks, so I feel like I am a good candidate on seeing if Raw Excel is a good option for somebody who feel like they might be hard stuck with their aiming ability. Full disclaimer, if you use Raw Excel already and you enjoy it and the way it feels and you think it works for you, all the power to you. I am just curious to see if it will work for me. So before I dive into my Raw Excel challenge, I figured I would benchmark my run in the RA Hard Benchmarks playlist before I make the switch. Here is my setup and settings right now. I'm using a Glorious Model O wireless with ceramic feet and grip tape on an Artisan Hine Soft XL mousepad. I also use a sports compression sleeve when I play because it lowers the friction my arm has against my desk and mousepad. As far as my mouse settings go, I run 800 dpi at a 0.35 sensitivity inside Valorant, which I have matched in AimLab, and the pulling rate on my mouse is 1000 Hz. After playing through the playlist and documenting my scores and current high scores, I ended up with this table. I actually ended up creating new high scores while running through this playlist, so I'll be curious to see if I can get close to these scores or even better after I create my acceleration curve in Raw Excel. But how do we do that? I went ahead and watched West Proter's more detailed video on creating a Raw Excel curve because I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I started. So I'll sum up the process briefly and show you how I created my curve. Alright, so the very first thing you need to do is download Raw Excel. Just Google it. The first GitHub link right here, just click that. It's the releases page here. And download the zip file. I'm going to open up the zip now, and you're just going to extract this to your desktop. I'm not going to do it again because I've already done so. Then you're going to open up said folder. You are going to run installer.exe, and you'll have raw Excel after a PC restart. Next, what we need to do is we need to set our mouse DPI to three to four times what we're currently using. So I run 800 DPI right now. I'm going to bump mine up to 3200. This provides more data for raw Excel to use, which is better. Once raw Excel is open, you are going to go to charts, scale by mouse settings, DPI, set this to two to three times the new DPI you set. So since I'm running 3200 DPI now, I'm going to set this to 9600. Then just hit rescale by above, you'll see that it adjusts the graph to scale accordingly. This just makes things easier to see, and I'll kind of explain why that matters later. Next, we're going to go to the sense multiplier box, and I'm going to put in 0.25 and hit apply. What this will do is this will take my 3200 DPI that's being inputted into Raw Excel and turn it back into 800. This way, I don't have to change my sensitivities in any of the games I play. It will scale accordingly. Obviously, if you went from 800 to 1600 DPI, then you would set this to 0.5 and so on and so forth. Next, open up OBS and use these recording settings, assuming you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you have an AMD graphics card, you're going to have to kind of look up what uh, recording settings to use. But this is the settings I use when recording directly off of my PC and not my streaming PC. We're going to go ahead and add a window capture. It should default to the raw Excel window. Make sure it does. If it doesn't, just click the drop down and select it. Hit OK. We're going to move that into a corner of the screen and we are going to shrink it to about a third of the screen. Next, we're going to add our game capture. And I'm going to have it set to capture any full screen application. This usually works. If it doesn't work, just hit capture specific window and specify the application there. The application I'm using is I'm going to be using Kovacs because that is what West Proter used in his more elaborated how to set up a raw Excel curve video. So I'm following along with that for starters and just explaining the process. So if you have everything in OBS configured properly, your recording window should look something like this. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start recording and I am going to play through the playlist he created and recommended. 
Now you don't have to follow these steps along exactly and I'll kind of explain why here shortly afterwards but I'm going to play through this playlist and then explain the process of analyzing your recording. So all I'm going to do now is review my recorded footage. So I'm just going to take note of what task this is. So box yes, okay, easy. And I'm going to pay attention to my raw Excel window there and see how fast I was flicking most of the time. I'm kind of seeing where it's peaking roughly. So if I look at my marks here, it looks like it's peaking at anywhere from 50. I saw a peak as high as 80 or even close to 100 there. Um, but you're going to kind of see where it's going the most. So I'm going to say for this one, it's going to be 50 to 100. That's a pretty wide range, but it just depends on distance between targets. So I'm actually going to break this down a little bit. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 40 to 50 closer and then 80 to 100. I'm going to keep going and it helps if you have VLC because then you can just press E and go frame by frame. This will get you a bit more of an exact um, measurement. This is one wall, four targets small. Once again, it seems to be 40 to 50 from the looks of it on the graph even as low as 30 so we're gonna also kind of keep that a little bit of a little bit of a wider range we're just gonna say 30 to 50 there now this is a very loose and fast way of doing it obviously like i said you can kind of go frame by frame and really break it down if you want to so this one's really good because um you have to click these really small targets that also kind of strafe back and forth so this one's really worth paying attention to because now I can see when I'm close to the target kind of looking at my tracking speed there so it looks like I'm probably hovering anywhere 6 to 10 8 to 10 so now again you don't have to use this exact playlist I will put the share code in the description for you to copy if you have Kovacs but you can use aim labs you can use uh and you know any sort of aim trainer you want um and just kind of do similar tasks so do like a, a tracking test where you're tracking small targets there's plenty of those in aim labs do a target where you are flicking wide targets flicking shorter distance targets it's really all that matters you can even make another extra note for valorant deathmatch or something like that because the truth of the matter is you're always going to aim a little bit more carefully inside an aim trainer rather than a you know match of valorant so even if you want to throw in a DM there that you, a Valorant deathmatch that you recorded and go off that, uh, that is also perfectly fine. So now that we have some data collected here, it is time to develop our curve. Now I'm going into this a blind, but it is my understanding that a mouse acceleration curve is very much personal preference. So I kind of want to take you on my journey of how I have been developing mine. So I'm going to start by using West's video to um, start with my curve as like a base template. And I'm gonna walk through that. First thing that is recommended to do is to set this to classic and then change your power to anywhere from 2.1 to three, because if you set it to two and I hit apply, it's just gonna go back to linear and we don't want that. We don't want a linear uh, acceleration curve. Now, some people like that, um, but according to West, generally speaking, classic is the way to go, at least to start. He also recommended a power value of three. So I'm going to hit apply and you can see how that changes it. You can see that it really doesn't ramp up in speed until we get to like the 100 uh, counts per millisecond here. But we want to look at this input offset value. And this input offset value is basically how far over to the right should this graph be shifted over i'm going to zoom in a bit closer here on the graph now the reason you're going to want to do that is because if you're tracking a really small target so my multi-peak ascent statistic here and my pass through extra small horizontal statistic here i am already six to ten uh counts per millisecond in um, when i'm trying to track that target so i'm about here on this line that's already starting to accelerate slightly so we want to offset this to where we tell the curve don't accelerate until i'm hitting a certain speed that's what the offset does so you're going to want to use an input offset that is usually about twice this value because in aim training you're aiming a little bit more carefully compared to if you're playing valorant 
um, in an actual game, you're not thinking about your aim as hard, um, so you're going to be a little bit looser with it, generally speaking. So I'm going to start with an input offset of like 16, because that just seems to be kind of in between um, my 6 and 8 and 6 and 10 for the most part. Now next we're going to look at our input cap, so you want to hit this drop down and set this to input, and then we're going to adjust this value. Now a rough calculation to figure out what you should make this value for starters is to make it about 80% of what your average flicking speed is. So I'm going to use my distant target score here or metric um, which is 80 to 100 and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my input to about 65 that's going to be about 80 percent of my lowest value i could probably bump this up to 72 um, but i'm going to start with 65 and if i hit apply you'll see that now suddenly the tail end of my curve is going to drop off and if i zoom out the graph you'll see that even more so now let's finally go back to that acceleration value so by default it's 0 0.005 which might work for you but a way west has to kind of calculate a recommended acceleration value is to take your your input on your x-axis so 0.25 for me in this case and multiply it by 1.7 and that gives me 0.425 so my y on this graph needs to be close to 0.425 when the acceleration kicks in so kind of in this part of the graph so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drastically bump up my acceleration and now as you can see my acceleration is getting closer to there, but not quite. Try 0.15. Okay, that seems to be pretty close. 0.425 is going to be right about here, and it's right as when kind of like the midpoint of my acceleration is there. And now if I look at this gain value and uncheck it and hit apply, now you'll see that it caps it, but it caps it at way lower than that. Some people like this, some people don't. With gain off, it means that once it hits um, a certain threshold, once it like finishes that acceleration curve, the start of it anyways, it's going to just cap it off there so it doesn't get any faster. Whereas with gain on, it's still going to get progressively faster, um, just at a slower rate, if that makes sense. I also kind of go ahead and demonstrate what different power values do. So if I go from 3 and set it to 2.5, you'll see that my curve is much more exaggerated at the start. If I set it to 2.25, almost even more so, and I'm going to actually zoom in on this graph. If I set it to 2.5 again, you'll see that the acceleration isn't quite as fast. So this is something you do definitely have to play around with, but having a little bit of data in your aim training or Valorant deathmatches or Counter-Strike deathmatches or whatever you're using does certainly help. So I'm going to go ahead and try this out and see how it feels inside Valorant. All right, so I'm going ahead and trying out this uh, curve here. We're gonna see how this feels just in game. This is a bit of a first impressions type thing. I will say something I did do is I did lower my in-game sensitivity from 0.35 to 0.3 because the way mouse acceleration works is that it gives me the ability to still like flick fast if I have to. I just got to move the mouse fast enough to get that feeling. So that means I can get away with lowering my sensitivity without it necessarily hindering me. It gives me a little bit more control over my micro adjustments. That's another way you can look at it is mouse acceleration lets you get away with lowering your sensitivity a bit more, especially if you don't have a lot of mouse space. Like right here, I'm used to turning. I'm used to turning with my whole arm. So that felt a little fast for me. So already I can tell that I don't like how aggressive this curve feels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shrink my graph a little bit so I can see it better. I'm kind of getting a feel for my normal flicking speed. So once I'm hitting this, uh, my, my, I guess my distant flicking speed, I can tell that it's almost doubling my sense here. That's a little bit too aggressive for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop this acceleration value first and see what that looks like. This already feels a million times better for me. But like West was saying, your graph is going to kind of change over time. You know, you kind of want to you kind of want to get a feel for stuff because your first graph is not going to be perfect. So you kind of just sculpt it as you go. Okay, some some 
decently crispy shots. Not straight one taps, but I'm not I'm not gonna complain. Let's see how it feels on a phantom. Now I will say something that Wes did point out as well is you want your curve generally speaking to be your average flicking speed it should accelerate to anywhere from one and a half to two times your your sensitivity so by that logic okay i need to do 0.25 times 1.5 that puts me at 0.375 so it's actually mine is just barely short of that it's closer to like 0.34 my average flicking speed, at least on distant targets, is upwards of 100, so I'm just using 100 as, like, my baseline. So, in theory, I should make this a hair more aggressive. I'm going to try 0.11 and see what that looks like. Okay, that puts me closer. Let's try 0 0.11. Let's try 0 0.12. Okay, that puts me pretty much dead on. Uh, that's not too far off. That's actually maybe even slightly higher. So, 1.5 to 2x that. Um, so 2x would be, well, 0.25 times 2 would be 0.5, obviously. So I could make this really aggressive and make it literally double my, double my sense if I, on my average flicking speed, but, um, I don't want that. I don't, I don't like that. Um, I like mine to be a little bit less aggressive here. So I'm going to try this and see how I feel with that. I might even also up my offset a little bit more. I feel like for my average micro adjustment, I'll have to go back in the DM footage and look. I feel like for my average micro adjustment, I'm probably I'm probably still being accelerated a little bit. Oh, right there was like a way over flick. I was trying to do a 180 and I'm forgetting how much uh, distance I need to cover there. So yeah, my big swooping flicks, like 180s or like big turns and stuff like that, I still have to get used to that or adjust my curve accordingly. Initially, I struggled with this aggressive curve and even made a couple of changes to it in the middle of the deathmatch. Eventually, I settled on this curve here. Notice how I have a rotation value set. This just adjusts how much rotation to apply to the mouse sensor. To find this value, open up paint on your computer and close your eyes. Flick your wrist back and forth slowly as if you were tracking a target. If the line is perfectly straight after you open your eyes, congrats, you can leave this value at zero. However, more likely than not, there's going to be a slight tilt in your line. Start playing around with the rotation value until your line is straight. If it slants down to the right like mine did, use a negative value. If it slants down to the left, use a positive value. And get really precise with it, you can get down to decimal points for this rotation value. I ended up settling on negative 1.5, negative 1.6. After playing a ranked game that night with the curve that I had set, I felt like I had a good starting point. I figured it was time to see if there were any immediately noticeable results with my aim lab scores. And the results were to be expected. For my flicking performance, it was about the same as before. However, my tracking performance seemed to suffer greatly. I'm not surprised as with my Excel curve, I went ahead and lowered my sensitivity even more from 0.3 to 0.28. This felt great in Valorant, but not so great when I was trying to track targets in this playlist. I could probably improve my tracking scores over time, but I think I'm going to at least bump my sensitivity back up to 0.3 again. I did enjoy flicking on this curve. I felt I could be more confident in my flicks since my overall sensitivity was lowered without feeling hindered while flicking due to the acceleration. So you can kind of get away with that lower sensitivity when you have an Excel curve because then if you need to do a fast turn, you can just flick the mouse a little bit harder and you'll get that turn. Overall, I think I'm going to continue to play around with the idea of running a mouse acceleration curve when I play Valorant and when I aim train, as I feel it could be a huge benefit once you take time to set up the curve. Thank you West for opening my eyes to the world of mouse acceleration. And if you end up watching this video, I'd love to hear your feedback on how I did setting up my curve. And if any of you guys are new to my channel, and have not seen West's video, uh, they're going to be linked below. Go check both of them out. Check out his channel. He's got lots of good stuff there. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Click the subscribe button for more aiming and Valorant related videos, as I'm sure I'll have a follow-up video to this one eventually. You can catch me live on Twitch, where I will be continuing to experiment with RawXL, twitch.tv slash signalthewolf. Catch you guys later.